My name is Glam Hag. I'm a director, performance artist, production designer, and fabricator. And this is what Chicago sounds like. I'm originally from London, England. I grew up there. And then I moved to LA when I was 13. And then I came to Chicago about 12 years ago. So I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I'm like one of those people that's been sort of compulsively making art since like I can remember. I used to like draw all over my body like as a little kid. It was always like painting, drawing, and then it turned into, you know, going to school and then wanting it to become a career, but it always ends up kind of coming back to that place of play and also like this almost like necessity and compulsion. I think that my best work happens when I just follow the thread. And so I don't always know why I'm making something, but then it becomes apparent once the ball starts rolling. I think I've always made work about identity and like the performativity of not just gender, but all of the different ways that we present ourselves to the world. I think just always been very fascinated with that, with like putting on a costume and how that can transform you. And I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily like an actor because like I really always feel like I'm like myself, but I feel like I'm just trying on a different skin in that sense. And then when I went to art school, I went very heavily in the like video art performance and performance art direction. That kind of looked like all sorts of things. I think that I was like very blessed to be in Chicago at this like really phenomenal time when there was like a thriving DIY scene where you would just see all kinds of stuff. And so I was exposed to people doing grad school level performance art. And then I was also experiencing like warehouse, messy, choreographed dance, glitter flying everywhere work. And so I got very involved in that scene and I was dancing with a group called Pure Magical Love, which was run by this amazing artist, Heather Lynn. But then I was also a part of a lot of other DIY art shows where I would do all kinds of things and a lot of that included like drag. Another theme that seems to continually come up is me wanting to rip my own guts out. Motherhood and birth is another theme that comes up a lot. And also performing at different kinds of venues being like, okay, we're performing at Berlin nightclub or we're performing in someone's basement. We're performing in someone's living room. We're performing in at a house show. We're performing on stage at the Metro. The performances would kind of like morph depending on like what that meant or like, or we're at like an alternative comedy show. And so all of those things were different like assignments to do performances that fit those bills. I also make costumes and sculptures, objects. The costumes and props that I was making and objects could exist as their own objects, but I found them more fascinating being like activated in performances and videos. And then once they had been used, they were either like dirty or destroyed or like damaged in some way. And then like they had this kind of charge and life to them and history to them. And I like found them much more interesting post being used in that way. I think I have released myself of fitting into any specific category of being like a sculptor or a painter or a performer and just like using everything in this all-encompassing way that I really try and just like embody in my even in my everyday life. I remember being overwhelmed at school and like learning about like how much art had already been made and feeling like there was no way I could possibly make anything unique and kind of combating that by literally then just imitating art that I did like because I was like I love this piece so much I want to remake it and embody it and I'm not pretending that it was original I am like going to, for instance, like dress up as Marilyn Monroe and redo my own version of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, or I'm gonna do my own version of this video art piece by George Kuchar that I really love. And it's like inevitably going to turn into its own thing because it's like, I think it's just being honest about, about that. And then it ends up turning into something different and just looking at it as kind of like an homage and a love letter. And then oftentimes it would be so removed from the thing that I was looking at that it would be completely different. And that's also how everybody makes art. You know, you talk about like what people's influences are and it's always like, oh, well, I was inspired by this and this and this. We're all pulling from everything. So I finished school and I was like, 
I'm going to figure out how to make a feature film in a year, and if I don't, then I'll go back to school. And I figured it out. So luckily I didn't have to go back to school. <laughs> the feature film that I made is called Holy Trinity. It's about a girl who huffs a mysterious aerosol can and develops the ability to speak to the dead. I can hear dead people. It premiered at Outfest in 2019 and it had a really successful festival run. I think once I transitioned to filmmaking, my practice just got like exponentially more collaborative. Chicago is this really vibrant place full of so much talent. And I also think for many reasons, there's something about the people that live here who are just like game to make stuff. Glam Hag Productions has technically been since I made Holy Trinity and I'm kind of just trying to expand it and figure out like what that means but I also have this ongoing project called Glam Brand where it is a like ubiquitous brand that's kind of like a commentary on consumerism none of these things actually exist they just there are commercials for them there's Diet Glam which is a soda there's Glam Bar there's now Glam Hag Productions my name is Glam and so it's sort of like leaning into this like unfortunate realm that we've entered where everything has to be branded packaged and sold and so kind of like poking fun at that a little bit, but also at the same time making something that just like is uniform and it is like all encompassing, which is something that I also try to do with like my life and my art practice. I think I felt conflicted when I first did it because I was like, this is essentially like an Amazon-esque brand that is like the villain, but it's also my name. It works as good branding that then promotes my work, but it's also supposed to be like yeah like a heavy critique on what social media has like done to art and it didn't used to be that way like this amazing glorious DIY scene that I was talking about of the past I have high hopes that we could come back to something like that but it's like social media has really made things have to be like hyper curated and presented in this like very clean way because like currency is now attention but it's like you have to but it's also tainting real expression I do think that, like, the most important thing to me just about, like, living this life is being able to, like, be a part of a community. I mean, I think that it's, like, the most important thing, period. And so it's, like, a way for me to be, like, doing things and engaging with a community that's, like, beyond just gathering and beyond just, like, partying. And, like, those things are great, too, but it's, like... A way that I've been able to form like very amazing complex relationships with people and like really build something and I'm hoping that I can continue to build in a direction where I can get to a point where I can help people make their projects too which is sort of what I'm hoping the direction of my production company goes in and sort of like branch out and be like making lots of projects and maybe like help the baby glams like get started. <laughs> My name is Glam Hag. I'm a director, performance artist, production designer, and fabricator, and this is what Chicago sounds like. <laughs>